Time now for our rants and raves, starting with Joanna. Yes, so I have a rant against CNN, uh -huh. uh, which has misused and abused the term breaking news. In oh, particular, yeah. last night, where there was a, a, a 9 o'clock, there was a Democratic debate. So uh, at least an hour before that debate, splashed across the screen, breaking news. I was so annoyed that I took a picture <laughs> of my television, <laughs> oh, and that's God. what I took. It, it, they were what, saying breaking yeah, news, in, huge stakes right. before the CNN. What? In what universe is that breaking news? As evidenced by the fact that 10 minutes before the debate, CNN broke into the breaking news <laughs> with actual breaking news <laughs> about the missile strike in Korea. So, you know. That's embarrassing. Yeah, it's it like really the boy is. who cried wolf, right? If, if everything is yeah. breaking, then something is this broken. This has been going on for a long, <laughs> long time. And actually, local news used yes. to be the yeah. real offenders of this, and now the networks have taken over. Yeah, That's yeah, right. and everything's red alert, you know? it's. Let, let, the term had meaning once. All right, yeah. Dan, I think you have, you're on a similar theme here tonight. One rant against CNN is not enough. <laughs> I also have a rant against CNN. Uh, and by the way, they're not alone in this by any means, but in the way that the debate was moderated uh, this week, the Democratic debate, you know, you've got two people going at it for two hours. You've got all the time in the world. And the moderators are constantly cutting in. You're out of time, you're out of time, we've got to move on. Most of the time... That's Dana Bash. She was, she was well, particularly... Well, da Dana Bash was particularly bad, especially at the end. She interrupted a pretty hot exchange between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders so that she could ask a process question. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand you can't let the candidates go on and on and on, but in most cases cases, you could tell that they were coming close to wrapping mm -hmm. up the point they were trying to make. And all you've got is, you know, Senator, Senator, Madam Secretary, mm -hmm. yeah, stop, it's ridiculous. stop. It's, it's enough. John, you moderate a lot of debates. I mean, and it's one thing if you've got seven or 13 candidates or something like that and you feel this time pressure. How would you have handled a situation like that? It's like, is it really necessary? To, even though you've told everybody, oh, you've got a minute for this and 30 seconds to react, but do they really have to stick to it? You sit back. No, of course not. You sit back in your chair and shut your trap. <laughs> if they're engaged, you can't allow candidates to talk over each other. And Wolf Blitzer, to his credit, at one point, stepped in yeah. and laid down the law yeah. on the fact that they were doing that. I saw that. Yeah. And you don't want to let them filibuster or ramble on when, they, when they're repeating themselves. But as Dan points out, to interrupt a hot exchange is just a crime against debate moderation. And you would think by now they would get that, but they don't. What I mean, was your uh, impression of the debate overall? Well, uh, what offended me the most about it, and this has, wasn't actually going to be my rant, but was the, uh, the fact that they doled out, they packed the hall with yeah. partisans oh, yeah. Yeah. of the two candidates yeah. who shrieked or, and or booed at every utterance, however in name. See, I kind meaningless. of enjoyed that. I kind no. of, I, I sort of like that Fight Club nature, <laughs> well, that like UFC it. nature of the debates. It kind of reminds me of questions for the prime minister, right? When you've got the crowd <laughs> behind you. I, no, I, it's I'll like see the energy if, in the room. I'll see if I can get your tickets to WWE next time it's I'll down at the it. garden, because that's, you know, it's just ridiculous. It's distracting, it eats up time, yeah. and it really is beneath the dignity, if there is any. I know I said dignity is passe before, but <laughs> it, it's really beneath the dignity well. of the Moment. There's no reason for any moderator ever, ever to say time. And it's like, yeah, you, right. first of all, you can look the, the you give them a nod. It's, right. Hand, I like hand gestures, hand, hand hostile gesture. hand gestures. <laughs> <laughs> Callie, what do you got? <laughs> um, I, this is a uh, rave and rant. Um, I know I mentioned that Al Jazeera America was mm. going to shut down. It, it formally did on Tuesday with a three-hour Here's dignified, dignified uh, finale um, showcasing some of their best work and some of the reporters who've done good work. They, the the uh, finale was anchored by Tony Harris and John Sigenthaler and Richelle Carey mm. and Stephanie Sai and Joey Chen and uh, Dell Waters. And that's just an example of the breadth of the kind of diversity they had in both their reporting team and anchoring team. They did some really good work. There's a lot of things to say about how badly this thing was run. Yeah. And, and that's too bad. Because but is it badly run or is it the carriage issue? Because well, that too. you couldn't watch it. Yeah. So who, I mean, we used to watch yes. it, you know, we'd watch it on tapes and so we could talk about it intelligently and they did They did have really good stuff. Yeah. Or I'd go online and watch yeah. it, but I, I didn't have it on my cable channel. You didn't go online to watch it because they it was, cut they that posted, off. As soon no, they as, uh, posted stuff yes. after yeah. the fact. Right. Okay. And exactly. you're right, it was deep, deep on the dial, yeah. right? Right, yeah. yes. Mm. So that was just too bad because they really did good work. And I, I personally uh, was on many journalism uh, committees uh, awarding them some of this work you'd never seen. Really? And it was really hard hitting, yeah. I saw dangerous kind of stuff that they did. And that they're gonna, that's going to be sorely missed, mm. you know?
Mr. Bannon. So. All right. John. Well, I have a kind of a bittersweet rave for a young reporter named Talia Buford from the Center for Public Integrity. There she is. She has a piece in the Washington Post today um, about how she missed the biggest environmental justice story of the year, mm. the contamination uh, of the water supply in Flint, Michigan. And it's especially ha uh, hurtful because she's a native of Flint and her mother still lives there. And her mother was trying to tell her about this months and months ahead mm. of time. Why didn't she pick up on the story? Just a couple of very brief quotes here. The plight of people in places unknown registered more than those in the place I knew intimately. Mm -hmm. Now I realize it's easier to swoop into an unfamiliar town and tell someone else's story mm -hmm. than it is to recognize the things you've become resigned to in your own life. Wow. Food for thought there yeah. for all reporters, no matter what their beat. This is well worth reading as a, a cautionary tale and sort of a, an apology, mm -hmm. a very heartfelt apology. Wow, mm -hmm. that's good. Also, listen to your mother. Yeah. yeah. Always listen to your mother. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, who's up? You. you. Oh, you. me. Yeah. <laughs> and one more here. I'm sorry about that. Well, I have actually a rave for Mika Brzezinski, who this morning looked straight into the camera and at her colleagues on Morning Joe and said that this incident involving former Bright Bite Bright, Bite Bart reporter Michelle Fields and Corey Lewandowski, the campaign manager for Donald Trump, was a joke from the beginning. And we talked about that here. If he, however, had just said, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I grabbed you, she went the extra mile by filing those charges against him, which never should have happened. Clearly, it was a nothing, nothing incident. But I think the, the Trump campaign escalated it by saying nothing at all happened, and then she felt she needed to push it. But, but I think Mika was right, and I think she spoke for a lot of women when she said, I kind of wish she had never filed those charges, because it, it sort of minimizes uh, serious assault and battery charges, and when you go for something on that scale, uh, a person and, at that level, it's... And it spoke to the narcissism and clubbiness of yeah. too much of the media. When one of our own is involved, oh, we're all yeah. in a Twitter, uh, there was a story to be told there and could have been told without that marginal case. Exactly. All right, that is it for our show. Tell us what you think. Email us, tweet us, or leave a comment. We're always on at beatthepress.org.